On day one, I was just a little T-Rex out with my Uncle Benosaurus searching for food. Come on, my boy. Keep up. I'm trying. Suddenly, the sky split open, only to reveal a giant meteor crashing down. Its giant explosion caused the entire terrain to shake. And from its blast, a wave of radioactivity shot out through our entire valley. I tried to escape. But the blast hit me, transforming me into a strange radioactive spider rex? My goodness, what happened to you? I don't know, I... But we were cut off by a large mutated pterodactyl that swooped in, blasting my uncle to the side. No! Wait, a green goblin pterodactyl? Huh? to me. I feel so much stronger with this new power. Let's see who the real predator is now. He cackled maniacally as he lifted my Uncle Benosaurus and began flying off. Bozo, run! No, get back here! On day two, I was running after them, trying to follow the goblin pterodactyl. Oh, come on. Where did he go? As I was looking up, I didn't even notice that I was running right towards a ravine. Ah! But out of instinct, I shot out a web? What the heck? Ah! Ah! Ouch! Whoa, did that meteor give me powers? I tried to shoot out more webs, but nothing happened. I can't even control them? Great, I have to find out what's going on and find my uncle. I made my way out of the ravine and saw a dodo bird frantically trying to catch his breath. Hey, you, did you see a pterodactyl anywhere? He took my- A pterodactyl? What? No, I've got my own problems to deal with right now. Hey, where are you going? I followed him until we ended up at the edge of a jungle. There was nothing but rumbling and destruction. <laughs> that meteor, it caused something to start rampaging through my home. It's destroying everything. That meteor changed a lot more than I thought. Yeah, and I saw where it landed too. Wait, really? Where? On day three, the dodo brought me to a part of the forest with a huge crater formed by a radioactive meteor? Maybe the pterodactyl came here. I stopped when I noticed tiny lizards were lining up to enter inside of it. And on the other end were mutated ones walking out. <laughs> Whatever's down there is probably what turned me into this. I have to go inside. Yeah, have fun with that. Once I made it in, the tunnel of small lizards then led me to the center of the meteor. And there was its radioactive core. What a find! Keep growing, my fellow tiny reptilians! <laughs> After a second glance, I saw that my uncle and the pterodactyl were nowhere to be found. Because of this, the mutated lizard saw me. Is someone trying to steal our special magical rock? Get him! On day four, some of the tiny lizards rushed in, trying to bite me? Aw, they're so small and adorable. No, you idiots! I meant the mutated ones! Oh. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The mutated ones then all charged in. Ah! In a panic, I shot out a web that swung me up and I stuck to the ceiling. What the? What kind of freak are you? How many powers do I have? But as I said this, I started to slip and I still can't control them. Ah! I swung and headed straight for the meteor's core. Ah! I shattered it, and because of this, radioactivity began to flow within me, causing me to grow in strength. I gained five more hearts, and now I could roar out spider webs at will. Whoa. You stupid dinosaur. You broke our rock. 
You'll pay for this! I looked around, only to realize I was completely surrounded by the lizards. Oh no. On day five, I was sprinting through a tunnel with a mob of angry lizards right behind me! What did you do? It's a long story! I barely made it out before spinning around to use my new roar to web off the meteor's exit. I promise you, this isn't over! Whoa, dude, did you grow? Yeah, it looks like that meteor is mutating a lot of creatures, including the one that took my uncle. Hey, you! Ah, another lizard! Calm down, I'm not gonna hurt you. But wait, weren't you with those guys? Yeah, I was. I'm not a fan of the whole mutating our bodies into big, ugly, buff reptiles thing. Oh, uh, no offense. None taken. The tiny lizard started to walk away from the crater. Wait, what do you want? A few hours ago, I saw a deadly pterodactyl carrying a T-Rex overhead. My uncle. Yeah, I thought so. And I'll tell you where they went, but on one condition. On day six, the three of us found a nice, safe place in the jungle. So, all you want is for us to keep you safe? Yeah, and this place is perfect for that. I mean, look at me, and look at you. Yeah, good point. With that, I got to work using my spider abilities to build myself a fossilized home. I was even able to make a little apartment interior for myself. Nice. Then I noticed the dodo bird making himself a home with a map planning table inside. Hey, what's this for? With everything going on, you'll need all the help you can get. I can be your guy in the chair. The name's Ned. Nice to finally meet you. I was then interrupted by the same maniacal laugh I heard days ago. The goblin pterodactyl. Hurry up! I think I know where he's headed! On day seven, I hurried through the forest, following the maniacal laughter. I'm close. It didn't take long for me to reach a tribal dinosaur town that was in complete ruins. Yes! From high above, the goblin pterodactyl dropped a heavy stone cage on some of the strong looking dinosaurs. I wanted to help, but then smaller pterodactyls swooped in, trapping more of the dinosaurs and picking them up in the air. He's capturing more dinosaurs? But why? Hello, alphas. Who's the real predator now? Hmm? It's me. When the big boom is ready, all of you will be history. And the forests will learn why the winged are superior. <laughs> he unleashed a powerful blast, exploding one of the buildings entirely. Big boom? What is he planning? Now, bring these prisoners back to the stone peaks. All the pterodactyls flew off with the cages, leaving the town deserted. The Stone Peaks? Is that where they live? That's right! And I know just where that is! Come with me! I followed along until we reached a beach cove filled with sacred crystal shards. Whoa! And far beyond, I could see the foot of the Stone Peaks. My uncle, he's in there. On day eight, the lizard headed back home as I began to run through the crystal coves. But out of nowhere, a group of masked dinosaurs emerged from the sand. Ah, hey, what the? Halt, newcomer, and leave now! What? No, I need to get past here to get to the stone peaks. We own these coves and do not permit any trespassers! Uh, uh, <clears throat> Although... They quickly huddled together, whispering amongst themselves. <laughs> okay, come with us! I listened and followed them into a separated part of the cove, where they had a whole camp. And at its center was a radioactive hot spring. Everywhere's been affected by that meteor, huh? 
Then, in front of me, walked another masked figure. A blue duck? Hey, what are you looking at, huh? You judging me or something? Uh, no. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Good. It's always the T-Rexes that are so judgmental. Oh, and you there. You should do yourself a solid and buy a Fozo plush. Believe it or not, they're even better looking than I am. Okay. Ignore him. My people say you wish to pass through our cove? Then we need something from you. What? From there, one of the dinos led me to a devastated area on the beach. Palm trees were destroyed, and there was fire all around. A beast has made its way here. If you can capture it and stop its destruction, you will earn safe passage. Do we have a deal? On days 9 to 10, while making my way through the devastated beach, I heard loud rumbling. Wait, that sounds familiar. Oh no, the beast that destroyed Ned's home. As I realized this, the tree line bursted open, revealing a massive radioactive rhino. Destroy! Break! Destroy! Wait! But it didn't listen and charged through the terrain, wrecking trees, rocks, and anything in its path. Hey, get back here! Stop! I chased it as it ran through more and more trees. Calm down! Uh, sit! How about a treat? It was all of no use as it destroyed the last tree in the area. Finally, a dead end. But the beast then turned towards me. Destroy! Oh no. It lowered its head and charged right at me. Uh, uh, trying to slow it down, I used my webs on the ground, but it just leapt over them. This is not going to end good. Ah, what a nice relaxing break. <laughs> Get out of the way. Ah! Finally, I made it back to the Crystal Cove camp as the rhino tore through the town. You brought it here? I panicked, okay? As I said this, the rhino charged in, hitting me so hard that it sent me right into the radioactive hot spring. Ah! But as soon as I hit the water, the radiation soaked into me, causing me to gain even more power. I gained five more hearts and became even more powerful. Did I just grow stronger again? Help us! The small mass died Rhinos were being cornered by the rhino, but a new confidence surged within me. Stay away from them. As I jumped out of the spring, I threw out a web and realized I can control my web swinging now. I swung above the rhino and used his confusion to let out a huge roar, trapping him in a web prison. <laughs> can't destroy, can't break. Sad. Hopefully, you'll learn your lesson with this little timeout. All of the dinos then cheered and came towards me. Thank you. Thank you. You are granted passage through our lands for eternity. Thank you. Now, I'm on my way, uncle. On days 13 to 14, I finally made it to the foot of Stone Peaks, and there, flying throughout, were more pterodactyls. I tried to use my webs to swing up and get closer, but... Whoa! Ouch! How am I ever going to get used to that? I began to investigate and saw one of the land dinosaurs from before. They were all working under the green goblin's watch, building something. And those that tried to resist were instantly killed. I gotta do something. That's when I saw Uncle Benosaurus. But when I rushed towards him, I was suddenly hit from the side. Ah! Wait. You. Someone came here voluntarily. Hmm? Aha, very smart. Zip it and give me my uncle back. Wait, you're that little tiny T-Rex I saw. And I can see you've also been mutated. Hmm. Well, in that case, I'll give you one chance. Join me, and we'll see what our powers can really do to the rest of these filthy reptiles. 
for? You could die. I looked towards my weakened uncle, and without a second thought, I roared a web at the pterodactyl. But he dodged and immediately fired back with a powerful, explosive roar. Ah! On days 15 to 16, I was low on health between my uncle and the green goblin pterodactyl. I told you to run far, far away. Yeah, well, I couldn't just leave you. You're all the family that I have. The pterodactyl unleashed another attack, but I reacted quickly, creating a shield of web around us. Listen to me. These pterodactyls are planning something. Planning something? Like what? All I've heard is that it's centered around a volcano. A big boom. Yes, and if they aren't stopped, it could possibly be the end to not only land dinosaurs, but all creatures. Another explosion blasted against my webs. One more hit and they'll break. Okay, well, let's go then. We can hide and find a way to survive. And what? Let everyone else die? It's not the right thing to do. You need to escape here and do what's right. But what about you? My shield of webs finally shattered. <laughs> I will be a distraction. Go! Uncle Benosaurus charged into the pterodactyl. No, no! Leave now! Reluctantly, I rushed towards the exit tunnel. On days 17 to 18, I safely returned to base. No, my uncle. I still couldn't save him. Ah! I'm not going to be able to stop that pterodactyl. He's too strong. Then I heard Ned's voice. And if it's here, then it could be here too. Did you get some upgrades? Inside, he was busy planning and talking to himself. Ah! Whoa, calm down. It's me. Sorry, I've been busy. I'm trying to map out all the areas that the radioactivity has effects. It's so much more than we think. I couldn't stop the pterodactyl now, but if absorbing radiation made me stronger, maybe I could if we find more. Yeah, I've clearly missed a lot, uh, but besides the point, you're gonna want to see this. Ned led me over to an icy room he made in our base, and there was a small ice cyclops. I'm an ice clops, actually. Actually, thanks to the radiation. Wait, do you know where more is? Yeah, sadly. The radiation turned my entire home and people into icy creatures. I got split up from them. Well, we can help you get back to your people in exchange for more radiation. You want more radiation? Wow, you really are crazy. Okay, deal. On days 19 to 21, the Ice Clops and I journeyed to the entrance of a tundra valley that was undergoing a heavy snow storm. We have to get through here? It's the only way to enter the tundra. And if I went alone, it would have been a death sentence. Why's that? You don't want to know. We began to push through the valley until reaching a deep drop into a chasm below. The only way across is this thin ice bridge. Walking on this is a death sentence. Just then, ice spikes began to fall all around us. And on a nearby boulder was a saber-tooth tiger. It immediately leapt and tried to claw at me. Hey, where did you come from? I am Craven, the tundra's top. Hunter, and you are my prey. I tried to roar at him, but he just leapt through it and slashed at me again. His hit pushed me onto the icy bridge, which already started to crack. I guess I don't have a choice. On days 22 to 26, I was in a full sprint, trying to cross the collapsing bridge. No one escapes my hunt. Your hunt? Stay away from me. The bridge cracked under our combined weight, causing us both to fall. Ah! But I sent out my web, and for the first time ever, I was swinging with confidence. Woohoo! Craven was not giving up though, and leapt from rock to rock along the walls. Seriously? We both made a final jump, barely making it to the other side. Okay, stop. I don't want to fight you. Ray, don't get a say. He charged at me, just as a freezing pile of snow completely covered both of us. Ah! 
my vision blurred and once it cleared i realized that the snow was a trap craven and i were inside of a glacier arena surrounded by bandit penguins and there overseeing it all was a giant mutated octopus <laughs> Welcome to our side of the tundra! This is how we do things here! Release me at once! No way, pal! <laughs> Silence! Welcome to my experiment! Experiment? Why, yes. I am a doctor, after all. I specialize in researching the perfect form of entertainment. Battle for the death! What? For years, I've searched for which species would supply the best research, and you two are the best test subjects yet. So, begin! In a burst of speed, Craven lunged and slashed at me. Ah! Tear off his head! What are you doing? Killing you. And then, when they let me out, I'll kill that octopus too. He attacked again, but I dodged. Stop. Look, we need to team up to escape this place, all right? I quickly looked around the arena and noticed the ice near the octopus was cracked. There. Look, if we both work together and slam into that wall, we can break free. Come on. What do you say? On days 30 to 32, Craven and I teamed up and charged at the ice wall. What are you doing? The octopus flailed as we crashed into it, causing the water and the octopus to flood into the arena. You're ruining my experiment. Sorry, Dr. Octopus, but your experiment sucks. It lashed out with its tentacles and started to slam down everywhere. Each one of his hits was so powerful. Ah! Uh, the water. We must get rid of it. Right. I tried to use my webs to cut off the water, but it wasn't working. Doc then raised his tentacle, about to strike Craven, but suddenly the wall began to freeze back over, cutting off the water. Wait, what? I looked up and there in the stand was the ice clops. Wait, you have ice powers? Yeah, I told you I'm an ice clops and I hate it. Whoa, okay. Jeez. Dr. Octopus was stuck, weakened without any water. No, I just wanted a perfect experiment. Yeah, this guy is crazy. <sighs> Thank you for saving me. I... Yes, I've decided that I won't keep trying to slash you into a million pieces. <laughs> Thanks. Come on. We aren't very far away from my home. On days 33 to 35, the ice clops brought me to a small camp in the tundra. The recently transformed frozen village was covered in glowing green ice. And in its center was a large radioactive ice glacier. As promised, the crystal is yours. Please take it. Of course. Thank you. I bit into the large radioactive ice as its power surged through me. I grew even stronger, gaining five more hearts and the ability to charge at my enemies. I even gained spidey senses. Whoa, sweet. But is it enough to take on the goblin pterodactyl? Yeah, I heard about him. Wait, you have? Uh, yeah. His crazy plan is impacting everyone. Whatever my people hear his laugh, we know to hide. He's building something. Rumors say it's a meteor. One that's bigger than that radioactive one. He's creating an entire meteor? That's not good. On days 36 to 39, I return to base, bringing all the ice clopses with me. It's not safe for you guys to be out there by yourselves anymore. You can stay here. I helped build up the icy room from before to fit all of them. Thanks. I still hate this ice stuff, but it's pretty all right. I'm glad to hear it. I turned to walk towards my home when I saw Ned looking really sad. Hey, what's the matter? I'm okay, I guess. That meteor just made me think a lot. My home's destroyed, and I wish I could do more than just this. Yeah, well, you've helped me a lot. Yeah, 
I guess, but I'm just a dodo bird. Yeah, a really smart one. Just then, we were interrupted by molten rock that exploded between us. Ah! More rocks began raining down from above. Huh? We rushed to check outside the base, only to see that in the distance was a deadly volcano, and it was very active. On days 40 to 44, the two of us approached the foot of the volcano. The goblin, he's here. Ned followed behind me as we found an entrance to its base. Just stay close. This place is crazy. Quiet. We snuck through until finally reaching the main chamber. There above a pool of lava was a giant meteor. It was being held up by multiple pillars in the chamber and more pterodactyls were there, forcing land dinosaurs to make it bigger. That's how he plans to use it. When this volcano erupts, it'll launch that thing right into the sky. And whenever it lands, who knows how much destruction it'll cause. We have to stop it. Now, I charge into the chamber, heading right towards the meteor. What? Are you crazy? With a powerful roar, my webs were wrapped around it, but the pterodactyls took notice and flew into attack. Ah! Before I could roar out again, one of them scooped me up and threw me into another room. Ow. <coughs> there before me was my uncle and the green goblin pterodactyl. Ah, the itsy bitsy spider fell right into my trap. Let my uncle go. Who? Him? He roared at Uncle Benosaurus, and its explosion made him so weak. Oh! No! I was about to run in, but he stopped me. You do anything, and he's dead. <laughs> I have eyes and ears everywhere. A spider rex traveling the world to stop my plans? I'm planning a miracle. Don't you see it? No. If you launch that meteor, even you pterodactyls will be killed. Can't you see that? And what's so bad about that? What's so bad with a little change? Hmm? Well, you are about to experience a very, very big one. What? No! I lunged forward, but he blasted my uncle with another attack. Uncle Benosaurus fell to the ground weaker than ever. Pozo, listen to me. You have a gift, a power, and with great power comes great responsibility. Remember that? Remember? Uncle? No! I unleashed a roar louder than I ever had before, blasting the goblin out of the room. Uncle, he, he's gone. That pterodactyl, he's going to pay for this. I then heard a noise coming from nearby. What is that? On days 48 to 52, I made my way down a separate tunnel that revealed a caged dinosaur. Please, for the love of all reptiles, let me out before that goblin returns. I blasted open his cage, letting him go. You were another prisoner? That monster, he threatened my family. If I didn't do what he wanted, he would have killed them. Wait, what did he make you do? Before he could explain, the volcano began to rumble. Hurry, we need to get out of here first. We escaped to a distant clearing. Look, the radioactivity, it's changed a lot of dinosaurs. It made my people gain enhanced intelligence, hence the glasses. But then he forced me to create something for him. So you helped him design the meteor? Well, yes, but all I want to do is stop all of this. Back at my home, we may find a countermeasure to his plans. Okay, it's worth a try. Lead the way. On days 53 to 56, I followed the intelligent dinosaur into a whole futuristic city? All around were civilized dinos. Food! Get your food here! Oh, I'm starving. I'd like some food, please. You got any money? Uh, what's money? Ah, look at this idiot, Asaurus. Not so smart, are you? Rude. 
Ignore them. The facility that can help you is this way. He brought me over to the city's destroyed building? This is the facility? Doesn't look like much. No, no, no! This is the city's power plant. Something must have happened. Indeed, something bad happened. This plant is used to harness the radioactivity that transformed us. But not long ago, a power-hungry creature broke in, turning him into something else. Like what? Just then, thunder rang out from a distant mountaintop. Oh. <sighs> Oh, I have an idea. If you can lure that thing back here and trap it, we can siphon its radioactivity back and restore the plant. Here, take this beacon. It's sure to draw him in. All right, I'm on it. On days 57 to 59, the thunderstorm worsened as I got closer to the top of the mountain. Oh man, what kind of creature is this? The trees opened to a crystal arena. Whoa, lightning struck down near me and I looked up to see an electric dragon circling above. Now I, Electro, will be the strongest! Electro? What a lame name. Here goes nothing. I activated the device that drew in power before shooting up pure electric energy. But Electro didn't seem to notice. Oh, I guess I have to be closer. I saw the perfect spot with glowing crystal platforms leading up to it. Jumping from platform to platform, I used my spidey sense to know where the lightning would strike, dodging each one. <laughs> Piece of cake. I then leapt between the platforms, but the final one broke under me. Ah, ah. Okay, too close. Hey, you! I turned on the machine, finally gaining its attention. What? Who are you? Power? Electricity! It will be mine! Why did I think this would be easy? Ah! Stop running! On day 60 to 63, I raced back into the dinosaur city. Can you stop zapping me for like two seconds? <laughs> I was about to make it back to the power plant where I saw a newly built machine attached to it. That looks like the spot. Almost there. Suddenly, a yell caught my attention. One of the dragon's attacks ignited a building and a young raptor was trapped on the roof. Help me! No, what now? Glancing between the burning building and the plant, I knew that I had to make a decision. The floor under the raptor broke, but as they started to fall, I shot my webs, saving them just in time. Phew, thank goodness. Pathetic, you don't deserve your power. Ah! From one bolt of lightning, I was down to extremely low health. I will take your power, and after I kill you, I'll burn this whole city and everyone in it! Ah, uh, no, but I thought back to my uncle's words. With great power comes great responsibility. No, you won't! Using my remaining strength, I swung directly at the dragon, knocking him into the machine. Electro was now being held in the machine by his own radioactive electricity. Okay, what do I do now? There, hit that button. I saw it and made a break for it. My spidey senses tingled again as I nearly dodged his claws. No, no! With that, all the radiation was pulled from Electro as he exploded in an array of lightning. Whoa, thankfully no one was hurt and the radiation was stored in the machine. Yes. We can power the city again. I think I have a better idea. Hey, uh, Fozo, you said you need this stuff to stop that crazy pterodactyl, right? Yeah, I do, but... It's all right. You showed me today that you can be as smart as you want, but it's your bravery that shows what it means to be a hero. Please take it and use it to take down that goblin. I went up and absorbed the radiation, causing me to grow even stronger. I gained five more hearts and could now summon a chain of webs. Awesome. I looked around at all the destruction in the city and I 
think I have an idea. On days 69 to 73, I return to base with the intelligent dinosaurs. Because of them and their high tech, we were able to build up new defenses with secure walls and reinforce our homes. Whoa, talk about smart. With all of this space, we need to find and shelter more dinosaurs, especially if that meteor hits. Yes, yes, yes! I looked over and saw Ned's home was now fully stocked with guy in the chair, technology, and equipment. This is sweet! Wow, look at how thankful he is. With that, I took some time to build up a grave for Uncle Benosaurus, placing a sign with his last words. I will stop the goblin for him and for everyone. Ned rushed up to me excitedly. Hey! Uh, oh, uh, sorry to interrupt. It's okay. What's up? Well, with this new gadget, I think I found something. I've detected a massive spike in radioactivity. Bigger than anything we've seen before. All right. Where is it? It's at my old home. On days 74 to 77, I made it into the bamboo forest. It didn't take long for me to see that mutated mushrooms took over the area with walking mushrooms? What the? Just before one of them saw me, I was hit into a hidden cave by a monkey. Whoa, what's going on out there? Look around. Our once beautiful jungle has been overtaken by the very plants that filled it. Mushrooms. There's always something. I looked out into the forest and noticed a tall radioactive tree in the distance. That's what caused these mushrooms to come to life. So we break the tree. We destroy the mushrooms. I ran up to the massive trunk and tried to take it down with all my strength, but it wouldn't budge. Ah, come on. Oh, wait, our king could take it down easily. He's been mutated from this stuff too. The only thing is those mushrooms captured him. Well, where did they take him? On day 78 to 80, we approached the mutant mushroom camp. Their gross fungi was starting to spread throughout the entire jungle. Ugh, gross. We can't even eat bananas anymore, man. <laughs> it sucks. I then saw the Monkey King, a green mutated gorilla. He fought to break out of his stone cage, but the mushroom guards were keeping a close watch. How do we free him? Do I look like a mushroom? I don't know. Okay, okay, shush. Just stay close behind. We stealthily navigated the camp, avoiding the mushrooms as they patrolled. <laughs> The two mushrooms went down a tunnel. Let's follow them. We did until arriving in an underground kitchen. Wait, are they eating smaller mushrooms? Okay, that's just messed up, man. Wait, look. I saw across the room was a switch. There. As I went over to flip it, I stumbled into a large mushroom guard. His call alerted all the others in the camp. Oh, no. It came close and tried tried to slam into me with its head. Thankfully, I dodged over the switch and flipped it. <laughs> Hulk smash! On days 81 to 85, I ran up to the surface and watched as the Gorilla Hulk was rampaging throughout the camp. Yes! But then from behind me came the large mushroom guard. Whoa! I used my new web chains to take him down. You... Me? Yep, to help us destroy that tree. You in? Quickly, Hulk leapt up to the trees as I swung to keep up behind him. Tree smash! Yep, right there with you. Glad you got the point. Together, we reached the radioactive tree. And with a mighty slam, Gorilla Hulk caused the entire thing to collapse. Because of this, the essence of the tree flowed through the air and into me. I gained 10 more hearts and became came even stronger. I'm the most mutated T-Rex ever. Looking around, I noticed the monkeys and their king were so happy. As I said this though, I felt the ground rumbling beneath us. Oh no, the meteor, it's complete. On days 86 to 90, I ran as fast as I could to the volcano and there was the goblin. You little dinosaurs, line up! It's time!
time for the show! All the land dinosaur prisoners were being forced into cages at the foot of the volcano. The meteor was ready, and the volcano is about to erupt. Finally, my big boom is here! I need to save them, but I'm gonna need some backup. Oh no, I gotta hurry. On days 91 to 94, I went back to base and quickly gathered everyone. That volcano, it's ready. Are we safe here? What are we gonna do? Hey, hey, everyone calm down. We've got this. Listen up. I know some of you are scared and that's okay. It's normal to feel scared, but it's what we do in these moments that matter. My uncle taught me many things, but I know one thing for sure. And it's that we all have to do the right thing. It's our responsibility. And I could use a little bit of help carrying that weight. Are you guys up for it? I'm with you. You can count on us, Fozo. Ah, uh, what the heck? Yes, yes, I'll help. Thank you. Now, here's the plan. On days 95 to 99, Ned and I stood in the clearing of the foot of the volcano. Well, if it isn't the itsy bitsy spider. Come to burn like the rest of them. We're here to stop you. You can't go through with this. Please, I'm not asking again. Oh, you're trying to scare me now? <laughs> oh, get him! Groups of pterodactyls came flying into attack, but as they got close... Can I do it? Can I do it? No! Ned frantically jumped in the air and flapped his wings. That's the signal. Fire! With that, a barrage of high-tech missiles flew in and exploded the pterodactyls. What? Yes! With that distraction, the lizard snuck around and picked all the locks on the cages. Go! Go! Run that way! Over the hill! Suddenly, the ground shook, and out from the volcano spouted small meteors. No! I was about to run and help the dinosaurs escape, but... It's okay, Fozo! We can take him out! You just need to deal with... Him. On day 100, I felt like the whole earth began to shake as I ran up the volcano to finally come face to face with the goblin. Stupid! Ah, I didn't need those fools anyways. All I need is right here. My perfect plan has come into being. <laughs> It won't! We began to fight as his explosive attacks hit me extremely hard, but I was prepared. I used all the abilities I had gained along the way, my spidey senses and webs to even dodge his attacks. Uh, yeah. With a powerful explosive, Goblin sent me back towards the edge of the volcano. Ah. Poor Spider X. I bet your Uncle Benosaurus would be so disappointed in you right now to come so far and still fail. It shook violently as I could see the meteor down below. No, I can do this. I know that my uncle is proud of me because I'm doing the right thing. Just as the meteor rose up, I roared with more power than I ever had before, causing a massive web to shoot over the peak of the volcano, trapping the meteor inside. What? Impossible! My spider senses caught on to his attack as I died and hit him head on with my webs, taking down the goblin for good. And with that, the entire dinosaur world could now somewhat live in peace. On day one, I spawned in as Spider-Man. I was in the middle of a destroyed area. There were a bunch of craters on the ground. Who could have caused all of this? Suddenly, a large purple man walked through the fire. Hello, Spider-Man. I, Thanos, have captured the Avengers and your precious girlfriend, Mary Jane. You monster! Why would you do that? I swung at Thanos and tried to punch him, but he easily knocked me away. Once I obtained the Elemental Infinity Stone, the Fire Stone, the Ice Stone, the Lightning Stone, and the Earth Stone, I will use them to wipe out half the life in Minecraft and bring balance as all things should be. I am inevitable. Thanos teleported away, and I was left alone and confused. I swear, I'm going to stop Thanos and protect the world by obtaining all of the Elemental Infinity Stones myself. Then, I'll become Elemental Spider-Man.
I ran off on day two, knowing that I had to find the other Avengers and all of the elemental infinity stones. But how do I even start? I then saw a tall figure standing in the distance. It was a strange looking Enderman. Spider-Man, Thanos told me to make sure you didn't get the stones. The Endermen were working for Thanos? I had to stop him. Suddenly, he appeared behind me and knocked me forward. Ow! That hit alone took a bunch of hearts away. I tried to jump at him, but the Enderman teleported again. Ugh, I had to fight back. He kept fighting me, though, and I was down to a single heart. As Spider-Man, I had a spider sense, which helped me dodge attacks easier. I webbed the Enderman and stunned him for a second, giving me the perfect opportunity to use my strength to take him down. I may not have elements, but I'm still Spider-Man. I then noticed that there was a note on the ground. I picked it up, and it read... Here's the location to the Fire Infinity Stone. Go, retrieve it immediately. Sweet! Now I know where to find the Fire Infinity Stone. I swung off and left the area. Before I went off to retrieve the Firestone, I knew I needed to build up a safe spot for myself and the Avengers down the line. I went to the trees nearby and began to break one down. With the wood, I then crafted myself a wooden axe and pickaxe. After that, I swung off to go find some stone. I mined a bunch and used it to create myself a set of stone tools. Using my stone sword, I went around and defeated a bunch of sheep, collecting their wool and mutton. I then returned back to the location where I wanted my base, and I quickly built a small shelter out of the wood and stone I collected. I went inside and finish my house with a crafting table, chest, and a furnace. Good. Once I secure the stone, I'll be that much closer to stopping Thanos and becoming Elemental Spider-Man. On day four, I went out and reached the location towards the Fire Infinity Stone. I knew that getting this Fire Stone was not going to be easy, but something tells me that it was probably at the top of this volcano. I decided to make my way up. Man, talk about hot. There was lava everywhere. I finally reached the peak of it, and instead of finding the Fire Elemental, Element, I found myself in front of a strange looking illager. You must defeat me if you want to obtain the fire stone. I didn't want to fight against him, but he began to shoot fireballs and summon lava lays at me. I had no choice but to fight back. While fighting, I almost was knocked into lava. I gotta be more careful up here. We continued to fight, and he was able to set me ablaze with his fireballs. I was then starting to lose hearts quickly. I then hit him with my sword and weakened him to the point where he could not fight back. Finish me, and you can obtain the elemental stone you seek. I told him I had defeated him, but I was not going to kill him. That's not Spider-Man style. The Illager agreed and tossed me the fire infinity stone. Nice! I had one of the four elemental infinity stones. I collected it, and suddenly, my suit changed, adding fire onto it. I also gained five more hearts. I wonder what I can do now. I triggered the fire stone, and I can shoot a beam of fire out at will. Whoa! This? This is gonna be useful. I left the volcano and made my way back to base. On day five, I began treading through the world when I heard a commotion going on. I made my way over to the noise and spotted another Enderman, and it looked like he was fighting something. I got closer and saw that the Enderman was fighting a tiny spider. The tiny spider shot the enemy with a web and immediately took him down. Wow, that was pretty impressive. The tiny spider turned around and noticed I was standing there. The two of us stared at each other for a moment and we could both tell that there was a connection between us. Hello. Spino. And I'm Spider-Man. Those were some pretty good moves you displayed there. Why don't we put those skills to use by helping me save the world? He seemed skeptical. I can tell he wasn't very confident in himself. Hey, you should at least try. Spinner agreed, and the two of us swung back to base. Once we arrived, I built him a nice little home right next to mine. He was thankful and told me why he was fighting the Enderman from earlier. These Endermen started appearing more often, and they seem to be working for a guy named Thanos. They've been going around messing with only half the population, all for the sake of the Spanos. They need to be stopped. You know, Spinner, I agree. We both knew that it was up to us in gaining the Elemental Infinity Stones to stop Thanos. On day six, I was swinging through the world and my spider sense randomly got activated. I heard the sound of screams. I arrived to find a village that was being raided by a group of pillagers. Pig all their belonging. No money's going to stop us. Is that so? The pillagers turned around to see me standing right behind them. That stuff doesn't belong to you. Give it back. Oh, 
Fat champ! Get him! The pillagers all began to charge at me. Time to see what this fire element can really do. I activated the stone and shot the pillagers with a blast of fire, knocking most of them out. This guy's way too strong. I'm out of here. I parkoured across the village houses, chasing after the runaway pillager. I then landed in front of him and punched him towards the rest. I trapped all of them together with my webs, holding them in place. All in a day's work for your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. A villager walked up and dropped me some cooked chicken. Oh, thanks. I was getting hungry. Those fire powers were pretty cool. It reminds me of this fire underground prison not far from here. Fire underground prison? Huh. Maybe one of the Avengers are there. Tell me more about it. Yeah, I heard they had an Iron Man down there. He's basically a knockoff of ours. Okay, maybe you can just point me in the right direction. On day seven, I reach where the villager led me to. He did say that the prison was underground. Maybe I can use my new fire powers to help. I used them to blast the hole through the ground. Sweet. I quickly made my way through and landed inside of it. My spider senses then went off again. Chunks of the roof fell below me and I immediately maneuvered away from it. That was close. I continued going through the prison and noticed it was being guarded by fans. Thanos' Enderman. I need to be careful. I reached a cell and saw someone that looked really familiar. Wait, it was Iron Man. Spider-Man, get me out of here. Don't worry, I'll get you out. The Endermen all heard me though and began to attack. I moved around the prison to dodge them. I then used my fire ability to burn an Enderman down with a ray of fire. I jumped over another Enderman and struck him with my stone sword. I walked up to Iron Man's cage again and used my fire ability to burn it open. Took you long enough, kid. We gotta get out of here before more of those guys show up. Iron Man and I returned to base, and the two of us got to work on making him a home. He wanted to make a place similar to his previous one, Stark Tower. How am I supposed to build that? Shut up, kid. Take this. Should help you out. Oh, he dropped me some high-tech materials to use for it. I hope this is good enough for now. I went around and built his tower. This isn't turning out to be as big as his original, but I think it'll do. I then used the leftover materials he gave me for my house, making it look a lot cooler. Hey, thanks for that. Where's this is Thanos guy even from? Thanos? He's a guy who came from another world outside of Minecraft. He believed the world was too populated and needed to be balanced out. So he decided to take matters into his own hands. Too populated? Matters into his own hands? What did Iron Man mean by that? Before I can ask any more questions, Iron Man handed me an item that looked like my spider symbol. Take this. I believe it'll make you stronger. I collected it and could feel that my firepower had gotten much stronger. I shot it and it blasted a way larger hole in the mountain. Thanks, Iron Man. Listen, kid, if you want to stop Thanos, you need to find the rest of the Avengers. I suggest looking for Hulk first. But where do I find him? Well, you were drawn to me by the Fire Infinity Stone, right? My hypothesis is that each elemental stone you collect will draw you to a different hero. Believe if you get the Earth element, you'll probably find Hulk. Maybe Iron Man was right. Time to go find the Earth Stone. On days 9 to 10, I started my search. While searching, I stopped by a cave and thought I should get more resources for myself. I went inside and spotted some iron around the area. I used my stone pickaxe to mine it. I then smelted the iron and used it to craft a set of iron tools. Nice. My victory though was short-lived as my spider sense went off. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I rushed out of the cave and went over to the sound. I then found Thanos' Enderman attacking a player village. I noticed that they were only killing half of the entire community. Oh, please, why are you doing this? To balance the world for the sake of Lord Thanos. Before the Enderman could continue their attack, I jumped in and knocked him away. Your fight is with me now. I use my fire elemental ability to take them down. I then hit the last Enderman and knocked him out. The rest of the players thanked me for saving them and told me that I had their support in my mission. I appreciated that and asked the player if she knew the whereabouts of the Earth Infinity Stone. I have no clue. Man, I then looked over at the defeated Enderman. You know what? It's okay if you don't have the answers. I think I know exactly where to find them. I returned back to base with an unconscious Enderman, and he started to wake up. I quickly hit him and knocked him out cold again. I can't have you teleporting away from me. I quickly got to work building a new room for my base and my new guest. After that, I brought the Enderman inside and waited for him to wake up. 
Uh, where am I? I'll be the one asking the questions here. Now you see, all I want is some answers. First, why are you guys working for Thanos? Thanos promised us rule over the world if we followed his orders. We're sick of the end. The overworld belongs to us. Okay, now for my next question. Where can I find the Earth Stone? The Enderman fell silent and refused to answer me. All right, I guess we have to do it the hard way. I brought Iron Man inside, and he was preparing to blast the Enderman into smithereens. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Just call him off. <laughs> That's what I thought. The Enderman began to talk about a jungle temple that Thanos told him to retrieve the stone from. Iron Man, lock up this Enderman now. I'm going to go head off and find this stone. On days 13 to 14, I began my journey towards the temple. I eventually found myself in front of a bridge that led me to the entrance. I began walking across it, and my spider senses started to go off. Several Endermen appeared on the bridge. I had a hunch that you guys would be here. It's Spider-Man. Yeah! Him. I charged at the Enderman. These guys were still really tough, but with my fire element, I was able to take them down. I then spotted a small ocelot run out of the trees. Hey, uh, thanks, pal. Those Endermen have been causing havoc to this here jungle. They didn't even have any fish either. Oh, no problem. Hey, do you know where a shiny stone would be placed in this giant temple? Oh, this temple has plenty of traps. But since you took out these Endermen, I can help you with the shortcut. Just follow me. The ocelot then brought me on a side path, which led us to a much higher place in the temple. Wow, thank you. No problem, man. Just uh, be careful. I saw a light shining in the middle of it and figured that was where the earth stone was being held. Nice. This was going to be a piece of... Whoa! I fell through a trap door and was about to hit the floor. But I used my web shooter to save me just in time. Phew, that was close. That ocelot was right. There are a lot of traps. I climbed my way back up and was back in the room where the earth stone was being held. There it was. I collected the earth element. And just like before, my suit changed into a blend of the earth and fire elements. I also gained five more hearts. Great. I'm halfway there to stopping Thanos and saving my friends. On days 15 to 16, I was swinging across the world and suddenly my spider sense went off again and i spotted thanos in an open area so you finally decide to show yourself huh spider-man it seems that you have already collected two of my elemental infinity stones hand them over now that kind of gets rid of the whole superhero aspect of my job look these stones won't be going anywhere near you my world was too populated i couldn't save it in time so i arrived here in this world once I use these stones and wipe away half of existence, your world shall live on and not become extinct. I'm doing you a favor. Really? You think killing half of the world is going to help it? I've seen what your minions have been up to, and I won't let you have your way. Thanos, charge and send me across the area with a nasty punch. Time to see what this earth element could do. I activated the stone and used my new earth abilities to dive under the ground before shooting out of it, knocking Thanos back. The blow stunned him, and I used my firepower to blast him with the heat ray, but it seemed to only anger him. Thanos retaliated by hitting me with an axe. Oh, I was low on hearts. I quickly shot webs at Thanos and then I left and headed back to base. I arrived back feeling defeated. I couldn't believe that Thanos was this strong. I have two of the elements on my side. I really need to find the rest of the stones. I looked up and saw Iron Man flying around and chasing Spinner. Get back here, you bug. I ran over and broke up the commotion. Hey, hey, what's going on here? This nasty bug is leaving his webs all over my place. I was just milking my territory. I don't trust this guy. Listen, Spinner, Iron Man is my friend, and he would never hurt you. It's okay to trust him as well as the rest of my friends that I'm going to bring. They all mean well. I'm sorry, Spider-Man. I'm just so used to people hunting my kind. Most people hate spiders. That's why I'm uneasy with Iron Man around. Well, look, not all people are like that. You just have to give them a chance. Spinner believed in my words and apologized to Iron Man. Iron Man. I suggested to him that we should upgrade the base, and he agreed to help. The two of us went off and added more stuff to it. Spinner lured some sheep and chickens inside while I built a farm to house them in. Then, he brought back some wheat seeds and planted them to start a harvest. Afterwards, Spinner decided to decorate his house with a few webs. With that handled, it was time to use the Earth Infinity Stone to go and find 
Hulk. On days 19 to 20, I was tracking Hulk down. Just like Iron Man said before, the stone was drawing me towards him, making it easier to find him. I made my way through a forest and found myself in front of a big and earthy prison. Suddenly, the ground started shaking and a roar could be heard inside. That could only mean one thing. I walked inside and saw a large green figure banging the ground. Hulk was trapped inside of a cage trying to escape. Let Hulk out so he can smash ground! No way, you big green monster! The Hulk was being guarded by some of Thanos' Endermen, so I had to fight my way through to get to him. I began my attack and started off by knocking a few of them out with my fire blast. They tried to surround me, but I used my Earth abilities to spin around and knock them down. I then reached Hulk's cage. Don't worry, buddy. I'll get you out of here. I used my fire ability on the cage, but it didn't melt. Fire no good on cage! Really? Thanks, Hulk. Maybe if I use my Earth element, I'll be able to break him free. I jumped on top of the cage and concentrated my ability. Then I began to spin and drill the hole right through his cage. Talk about a cool ability. Now let's get you back to base. The two of us returned and Spinner was there to greet us. Wow, yo, huge. Hulk not huge. Hulk is Hulk. The two of them laughed and I can tell that they would become really good friends. It's good to see Spinner trust new people. Hulk and I began working on a new place for him to stay in. He said that he wanted something big enough for him to fit in, but also secluded. Yeah, that's probably best. With the materials that I collected, we built a bunker for the Hulk's new home. Thank you, Spider-Man. This worked nicely for Hulk. He then told me that before he got captured, he happened to find something. What's this? I could feel the earth stone being drawn to it. It must have been something that could help amplify the stone. I can put that to good use. Iron Man walked in and told me that he can build me a reactor to help me amplify my earth powers. Wait, what? Sweet. I just need some materials to build a lab. Then we can get started. On days 24 to 26, I was out searching for more materials and eventually came across a small cave entrance. The cave seemed too small for me to fit in. Luckily, I activated my earth ability and immediately started drilling the hole through the cave. I was inside and it was full with a bunch of ores. These would be useful for building Iron Man's new lab. Using my iron pickaxe, I mined all of the materials that I could see. I spotted some iron inside and collected enough to make myself some armor. I then pulled out a crafting table and made myself an iron chest plate and some iron boots. That should help protect me from future attacks. I used my drill attack and dug deeper into the cave until I came across some redstone. I think this was the key ingredient that Iron Man needed. I mined all the material and felt like this was more than enough. Excited to bring this back. I returned and me and Iron Man immediately got started on creating his new lab. I then gave Iron Man the materials I collected and began building. Once we were finished, we both admired the work. Yeah, not too shabby, kid. Thanks. You know, it means a lot, Coming from you and yeah 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 now get out so i can get started on your reactor he then kicked me out of his home oh geez talk about rude the next day i walked inside and iron man handed me the finished reactor i combined it with the new item hulk gave me and i can tell that my earth element has gotten stronger now my earth attacks would pack more of a punch thanks iron man spinner came speeding in and i asked him what was the rush I went off to go adventuring and I think I found the Ice Infinity Stone. That's great news. Where is it located? But he seemed like he had bad news. I saw the stone and noticed that a person was stuck inside of it. He looked like some kind of soldier. Soldier? Oh no, don't tell me that Captain America is trapped inside of the Earth Stone. Spinner quickly gave me the location and I swung off. On days 30 to 32, I was walking through an ice biome in search of the Infinity Stone. Spinner told me that he saw the stone inside of a castle. After climbing a mountain, I finally found the place and noticed that it had been destroyed. I quickly rushed over and went inside to see that Thanos was about to grab the ice stone. I don't think so. I shot a web blast at him and he easily dodged it. That trick won't work on me again. Well, I'm not gonna let you take that stone. I charged in at Thanos again, but he knocked me out of the castle. He kept trying to slash at me, but my new chest plate thankfully protected me from a lot of the damage. I then used my amplified earth power and tried to use my drill attack to deal some damage. He wasn't hit by it, though, and used his strength to brutally damage me. Ow. You weakling. You should know by now that you don't stand a chance against me. Thanos pulled out the Infinity Stone. Oh, no. He was able to get it. He then used the stone and completely covered me in a block of ice. I can't move. <laughs> now that you are trapped, I shall go and retrieve the Lightning Stone. 
and used both of them on you to collect the rest. All I could do was helplessly watch as Thanos left. It was days 33 to 35, and I was starting to feel helpless. Is this really it? Did I get defeated this easily? Suddenly, I heard a familiar noise start to enter the area. Come on, kid. Where are you? Huh? Found it. Uh, don't worry, kid. I'll get you out. Ugh. Thanks, Iron Man. How in the world were you able to find me? He told me that he placed a tracking device on me a while back. Hey, what the? Shut up, dude. I saved your life. I told Iron Man that Thanos was able to get the Ice Stone. How are we going to get Cap now? Iron Man told me not to worry about that. While tracking you down, I was able to find some of Thanos' goon. And it could probably lead us back to wherever he is. He gave me the location, and he and I both went our separate ways. On days 36 to 38, the location led me through a cave. I journeyed deeper inside until I was able to find some diamonds. I used my iron pickaxe and mined enough of the material to start making my diamond armor. I was able to craft myself a diamond chestplate and a pair of boots. Maybe this will keep me safe from his attacks. I then heard commotion going on on the other side of the cave, so I went out to see what was happening. I saw a nearby village, and I found the place was half destroyed. Thanos' endermen were the root of all this chaos, and they were killing off half of the villagers. I jumped in the middle of the village and confronted them. I quickly shot an enderman with a fire blast to stop him from harming a villager. An enderman teleported in front of me, but I used my earth power to spin and knock him out. I then used my fire ability to mow most of the group down, leaving one left. The Enderman got scared and teleported out of the village, but I wasn't going to let him escape. I used my spider sense to find the Enderman just outside the village running away. Perfect. I needed to follow this guy to lead me to Thanos' base. The Enderman was able to lead me to what I presumed to be Thanos' base of operations. I followed him inside before reaching a room where he and Thanos were speaking. Were you able to balance out the village? Mostly, but Spider-Man got in our way again, sir. Well, I guess the cat's out of the bag that I escaped from the ice. No matter. Your job is done. That monster! He didn't need to kill him! I looked over, though, and saw that he left the stone right in the open. Now is my chance. I walked over and quickly was able to collect it. My suit immediately changed into an earth, ice, and fire variant, and I gained five more hearts. As much as I would love to test these new powers out, getting Cap out was my first priority. Hey, you! Stop right there! Uh-oh. Time to go. I quickly swung out of Thanos' base and left the area. Let him go. Once Spider-Man secures the final stone, that's when I will strike. On days 42 to 44, I was a good distance away and landed outside of a cave entrance. All right, Cap, how do I get you out of here? I dropped the ice infinity stone, hoping for him to pop out, but nothing happened. Ugh, how am I supposed to do this? Transmission incoming. Um... Hello? Hey, Spider-Man. How are you talking to me right now? Yeah, I added a communicator on your suit, as well as... You know, it's not Iron Man wanted to know if I was able to secure the stone. I was, but the only downside is... Captain America is still trapped inside of it. I feared as much. The only way to get Cap out now is to go inside the stone. I can build a machine for it, but I need some resources. Great. Lucky for me, I'm right next to a cave. I went inside, and I was able to find some diamonds. I collected enough to make myself a set of diamond tools. I also had some left over for whatever Iron Man needed. I started swinging my way back to base, but something caught my eye. I landed at the top of a tree to see some pillagers running away from a village. Stealing those emeralds and gold was a piece of cake. Yeah, we're filthy rich now. Sorry, guys, but there's a return policy for stolen objects. Oh, no, it's Spider-Man. The pillagers try to run away, but now I have my ice powers to freeze them in place. Whoa, I'll be taking that. Thank you very much. I return the emeralds and other things back to the villagers. Hey, those pillagers shouldn't be bothering you guys anymore. The villager dropped me some emeralds, and I thank them for giving this to me. Maybe this is what I need to help power Iron Man's machine. I left the village and headed back to base. I returned to base and spotted Spinner hanging out with Iron Man and Hulk. I wonder what they're up to. Listen, kid, if you want to become stronger, you need to be able to break down large objects. Yeah, like this. Smash! Oh, wait, here goes nothing. Spin-o, smash! 
<laughs> Don't worry, baby spider. Hulk will get you there no time. That's nice. It's good to see that Spinner is feeling more comfortable to be around the Avengers. I walked over to the group and told Iron Man that I collected the resources. Good. Now let's get to work. The two of us went over and started working on a machine. By the next morning, Iron Man and I were able to complete all of it. He told me that this shrinking device would be able to make me small enough to enter the Ice Infinity Stone and rescue Captain America. I dropped the ice stone and Iron Man wished me luck. He activated the machine and there was a large flash of light. Okay, here goes nothing. On days 48 to 50, I was inside the Ice Infinity Stone and found myself surrounded by nothing but snow. Yep, this was definitely the right place. Now, where is Captain America? I could hear the sound of fighting and I saw Captain America fighting some kind of ice beast. Spider-Man? We gotta get out of here. This monster is too strong. The ice monster roared and shot Cap with an ice blast, freezing him on the spot. Oh no, I'll get you out of here. But first, I knew I needed to deal with this guy. I turned to face the monster. I could feel the ice stone was connected to him somehow. Was this monster the guardian of this place? I needed to prove my worth. I charged at the monster and he tried to hit me with his blast, but I jumped away and dodged the attack. I activated my earth power and tried using my drill against it. The monster hit me with his breath attack. Oh, that stings. Luckily, my diamond armor protected me. How do I beat this thing? I think I've got it. I confronted the monster and used my fire ability to blast him with a massive ray of heat. The attack looked like it worked, and the beast was gone. All right, Captain America, time to get out of here. Iron Man activated his machine once again, and Captain America and I grew back to our normal size. Thanks, Spider-Man. You really got me out of a pinch. No problem. Suddenly, I could feel my ice powers grow immensely. I guess it was the right decision defeating that beast. Now, let's get you accommodated to the base. I quickly got to work on building a house for him. I made his house a little bit more old-fashioned because I knew that he liked the classics. I appreciate the house, Spider-Man. This will work nicely. I got the captain caught up on the Thanos situation. And he told me that while he was stuck in the stone, he overheard Thanos speaking to the Enderman. I overheard that he's building up a weapon, something that will wield all stones at once to complete his goal in the snap of a finger. What weapon? Captain suggested that I figured out what it was. If I do, we can figure out exactly what his master plan is. I agreed and swung out of the base. My spider sense went off and I could hear a cry for help out in the distance. I made my way over to a town and saw Thanos' Enderman placing villagers inside of a cage. What are you going to do with us? You people don't belong here. This world needs to be balanced for perfect harmony. I swung into action and took on the Enderman. I used my fire ability to blast away all of them. I freed the villagers from the cage and asked one of them what the Endermen were doing. They said they were going to take half of our community and resources and planned on bringing them to Thanos. They didn't really care about us people, but they were more so looking for the rare resources we have. Rare resources? Why would he want that? Maybe this is all connected to the new weapon he's making. The villager gave me some diamonds as a reward. It was enough to complete my diamond armor set. I thanked the villager and swung out of the town. As I made my way through the forest, I heard a familiar voice shouting nearby. Leave these creatures alone! I saw a Spinner protecting some animals from a group of Thanos' men. Spinner shot a spiderweb at the Enderman and took him down while another teleported behind him. The Enderman tried to hit Spinner, but he was too quick and dodged his attack. Nice move, Spinner. But then more Endermen teleported in front of him, and I knew that he couldn't take them all on. I jumped in and defended my friend. Using my ice powers, I freezed all the Endermen in place. Then I defeated them all with my fire ability. Aw, oh, man. I had those guys. No, Spinner, there were too many for you to fight on your own. He was upset and told me that he wanted to be a hero like me. You are a hero, Spinner. I understand your motives, but you can't do all of it on your own. Sometimes I'm still trying to learn that too. It's okay to rely on others. Okay, Spider-Man, I understand. Don't worry, Spinner. You saved these animals here. You're a hero to them. He was happy to hear that. And I told him that I would meet up with him back at base. On days 60 to 62, I made my way back when out of nowhere, Thanos was there in front of me. Spider-Man, did you think I wouldn't notice you taking the Ice Infinity Stone from my base? All that matters is that I have it now, and I'm not going to let you have these stones that easily. 
You fool! Do you really think that you'll be able to defeat me with just three elemental stones? I noticed that Thanos had a strange gauntlet on. That was it. This was the weapon that he was making. I knew that if he had this weapon, there's no way I can fight him with only three stones. I needed to find the lightning infinity stone. Then I have to save Mary Jane. Thanos mocked me and suggested that I stop wasting my time with him and go find my precious girlfriend. You know, I will. And once I have all the elements, it's over for you. Thanos watched me as I swung off back to base. Why did he let me get away? <laughs> go and save your girlfriend. Once my gauntlet is finished, I will absorb all of the elements. Then you won't be able to save anyone. I returned and met up with Captain America and Iron Man. I told them about the gauntlet Thanos had, and I could tell that Iron Man was worried. That gauntlet might have something to do with why he wants the elemental infinity stones. Who knows how powerful he could be with an elemental gauntlet? I'm not gonna let that happen, but I need to find the lightning infinity stone and Mary Jane. I asked them if they had any news about the whereabouts, but Iron Man had no clue. I think I might know. Come with me. The three of us got into his home, and Captain America handed me a map of an island. You see, I found a specific area in the world that constantly has lightning storms. My guess is that's where the lightning stone is. Hopefully once I get the stone, it'll lead me to where Mary Jane is too. Iron Man told me that the area was too far for me to swing off, so I would need a boat to get there. Uh, be careful, Spider-Man. If it's an elemental infinity stone, then you know the journey there will be dangerous. I know, but it's a risk that I'm going to have to take. I left base and ventured over to the location. On days 66 to 68, I was on the edge of a beach and i can hear thunder going off in the distance the island housing the stone must be across this ocean i quickly used my diamond axe to chop down the trees around me after that i was able to make a small boat to help me sail across the water i began sailing across but as i got closer the storm started to pick up and it became really hard to sail it started to rain and lightning started striking down near my boat. Oh no, it's gonna break it. A lightning bolt managed to hit my boat again, knocking me away and sending me into the water. Suddenly, a dolphin floated up to me. Looks like the storm is messing with you too, huh, bruh? The dolphin told me that he lives in these waters, and they used to be the most sunny area in all of Minecraft. But thanks to the storm, it hasn't been the same since. I just want my old home back. Hey, how about we make a deal? If you could help me get to the shore of the island that I'm trying to reach, I might be able to make these waters sunny again. Really? Ah, you got yourself a deal, bro. Let's go. With the dolphin's help, I was able to quickly swim across the ocean. I made it to the shore of the island, and I thanked the dolphin for his help. <laughs> Help! Oh, what was that? You better go check that out, bruh. That noise. That was Mary Jane. I quickly swung across the island, following the voice. Eventually, it led me to a lighthouse. I quickly climbed up to the top and saw Mary Jane trapped in a cage. MJ! I ran over to her, but was immediately pushed back by a bolt of lightning. Huh? It's the lightning stone. You have to go get it. I looked out of the lighthouse and saw there was a bunch of lightning bolts coming from one place. That has to be where the stone's located. I made my way over there, running as fast as I can, trying to dodge any lightning bolt that was shooting at me. After enough running, I saw the lightning stone in sight. I ran towards the stone and used my spider senses to dodge all the incoming lightning. I finally reached it and grabbed it. Whoa. Because of that, the sky started to clear up. My suit began to change and I became the full-on elemental Spider-Man. I even gained 10 more hearts. This is awesome. I then left and was able to return to Mary Jane's cage. I'm so sorry that you've been captured. Don't worry about it, Tiger. I'm just glad that both of us are safe now. Yeah, same here. On days 72 to 74, MJ and I returned from the island, and I told her to find somewhere safe until I dealt with Thanos. I couldn't risk bringing her back to base. I didn't want her to be around any danger. As I swung back, I noticed that it was under attack. Oh no. I landed inside to find that it was a complete wreck. Anyone? Is there anyone here? I walked around to find all of the Avengers defeated and knocked out. Spider-Man. So nice of you to join us. Do you have all of my stones now? I turned around to see Thanos was there, and so were his Enderman minions. You're gonna pay for this. I charged at the Enderman and used all my elemental powers on them. I jumped into the middle of the group and used my Earth ability to spin around and spread them out. I then activated my fire power and blasted a few away. With my new lightning ability, I summoned a wave of lightning to take down the rest. I then could hear Thanos laughing at me. What's so 
funny. I struck Thanos with a bolt of lightning, but he didn't seem phased by it. And I actually started to feel weaker. What's going on? You still don't get it, do you? I used the last of my abilities on Thanos and he wasn't phased. Oh, why am I exhausted? Ugh. You're coming with me, little spider. Ah, uh, where am I? I found myself strapped to a table and Thanos was there, facing me. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. What did you do to me? I was still extremely weak from our previous fight. Why couldn't I hurt you? I had all the elements. Oh, Spider-Man. All you were doing was giving the elemental infinity stones back to its rightful owner. Thanos explained that every time I used my elemental infinity stones on him, I was transferring my powers over to his gauntlet. So that's why I felt so weak. Your gauntlet is the reason for all of this. I tried to break out of the table, but I was still so weak. Thanos mocked me and called me a fool. He then pulled out his gauntlet and told me now that I'm my weakest, he can finally take the stones. The titan pointed at me and I was in excruciating pain. I can feel the elements slipping away. You can't do this. There was a large flash and my suit turned into normal. No, no. Thanks for retrieving the stones for me, boy. Now it's time for me to finish what I started. I looked over and saw that Thanos was holding a new elemental gauntlet. He then walked up to me and sent me flying out of the base. I landed back in my base, completely broken and defeated. He did it. He caught all of the elemental infinity stones. Spinner then arrived and was relieved to see that I was okay. I was working everywhere for you. I'm so glad that you're safe. Yeah, well, no one's safe now. Thanos has all the elements. I fell right into his trap. I basically did all the work for him. Don't beat yourself up, Spider-Man. We can still beat them. But how? It's impossible to beat him now. Don't you understand? Ow, what was that for? Spinner told me that he knew Spider-Man was a hero with or without elemental powers. Spinner, you're right, but how? I don't know how I'm gonna find a way to defeat him. An explosion went off in the distance and spinner and i quickly swung over to see what was going on we arrived at the scene to see thanos wreaking havoc on the world it's time to correct this world and make it balanced once again stop what you're doing you will be the first example to my correction wait no stop but before i could even react a white light began to slowly cover the entire area what just happened thanos what did you do? I did what had to be done. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, Spinner, are you okay? Thanos did it. You can still stop him, right? Do it for me. Be the hero I always wanted to be. Spinner, no! He slowly started to fade away out of existence, as well as half of the Minecraft world. Villages, people, everything gone. I couldn't believe that my friend and half the world was gone. This can't be happening. I was in shock. Thanos just erased half of the population in the blink of an eye. I looked back to where Spinner was standing and I noticed a book was lying on the ground. The book belonged to Spinner. It read, During my adventures out in the world, I managed to spy on Thanos and see what he was up to. I've been studying his gauntlet and managed to find a way to break it. The only metal strong enough to break his gauntlet is none other than Vibranium. Vibranium is one of the hardest metals in the world. Spinner must have been planning to collect it and use it as a backup plan in case Thanos got the stones. Wow, Spinner. Even in death, you've become a true hero. The only way I was going to beat Thanos was with Vibranium. I need to go back to base and see if the Avengers knew where to find some. On days 86 to 90, I returned to find that the base had been completely restored thanks to the Avengers. We were able to recover from our injuries and fix the place back up while you were gone. But the world... Half world gone. Where's Spinner? I revealed to everyone the bad news. Spinner was one of the ones who vanished. The group was saddened to hear that. But I told them that it was no time to mourn now. We need to get to work on stopping Thanos. That's exactly what Spinner would have wanted. I handed the journal over to Iron Man and asked if he knew where to find some vibranium. The last known remnants of this resource are deep underground within the mines. The mats where I'm gonna go. I walked over to a cave until I was deep 
deep underground. I surveyed the area and looked around to see if there were any signs of vibranium. Eventually, I was able to find a small amount, and I used my diamond pickaxe to mine the material. You know, this pickaxe gave me an idea. I pulled out a crafting table and a furnace, and I was able to use the vibranium to make myself a vibranium pickaxe. This right here will be the key to stopping Thanos. I returned to base and told the Avengers that I was able to find some vibranium. This was it. Now was the time for us to act and take down Thanos once and for all. I then quickly built a small grave for Spinner, and we all took the time to mourn for him. Hulk gonna miss sparring, partner. You were one of the best heroes I ever met. Goodbye, Spinner. I'm gonna miss you, but I promise that we're going to avenge you, and we'll avenge half of the world. I told everyone the plan for our final battle, and I knew that Thanos would be back at his base, thinking that he's won. That's when we're gonna strike, when he least expects it. I told the Avengers that they would focus on taking down Thanos' army of Endermen. We'll get the Mad Titan's attention. Let's do this, guys. On days 95 to 99, we all arrived outside of Thanos' castle. You all know the plan. The Avengers charge inside and began their assault. I watched as Hulk started smashing and taking down Endermen one by one. Iron Man flew up and rained down missiles on the group. The army was starting to thin out. We're making progress. Captain America was surrounded, but he used his shield to block their attacks. We got this under control, Spider-Man. Go get Thanos. Thanks for the assist, guys. I went over to Thanos' room, and he was there waiting for me. Really? You think you stand a chance against me without your elements? A friend once told me that even without my elements, I'm still a hero. And I'm here to prove that. Thanos used the fire element and tried to shoot me with the ray of fire. But I used the environment around me to dodge it. I tried to get close, but he used the earth zone to spin me around and knocked me away. I knew that this wasn't going to be easy, but I need to find a way. I then used my web shooters to try and hold Thanos down, but he countered with his ice ability and froze. Did you really think? You could defeat me? Without my elements? No. But with this, I broke out of the ice and used my vibranium pickaxe to break Thanos' gauntlet. The elemental stones were all on the ground, and I quickly collected them and transformed back into the elemental Spider-Man. It's good to be back. Impossible! Thanos then ran out of the castle. Oh, no, you don't. On day 100, I followed Thanos to a vast and desolate area. The Titan finally stopped running and turned around to face me. You think this is over? I've won! The world is balanced thanks to me! No! The world is broken because of you, and you're gonna pay for it! The two of us circled around each other, waiting for the other to attack. He tried to charge, but I countered and used my Earth ability to spin and knock him away. I then jumped at him and used my web shooters to stun him. It didn't work, and Thanos used his weapon to deal immense damage on me. Ouch. The Titan stood over me and was ready to deal the finishing blow. After I kill you, I'll make sure that all of your friends join you and that little spider. No! I summoned a lightning storm and hit Thanos with multiple bolts. He was finally taking damage, and I knew that it was time to finish this fight. I summoned all of the Ice Stone's power to freeze Thanos into a block of ice. Then, I blasted him with a large heat ray. No! I could tell that... He was knocked out and defeated. If you could use the stones to erase the world, then I'm gonna use them to recreate it. I concentrated, using all the elemental infinity stones. There was a large flash of light, and the world of Minecraft returned to normal. On day one, I spawned in as Diamond Spider-Man. Whoa, I'm a superhero with five hearts? Suddenly, there was an explosion, and a weird-looking figure on a hoverboard flew towards me throwing bombs. Spider-Man! It is I, the Green Goblin. You'll never be strong enough to defeat me. We'll see about that. As Spider-Man, I had cool web shooters. I used them and tried to hurt him, but it looked like they didn't do too much damage. <laughs> You puny spider! Those webs won't work on me! Green Goblin came charging at me, but I was able to quickly dodge it! Whoa! I had a spider sense! Green Goblin then threw his bombs at me! I tried my best to go around and dodge them, but eventually one of them managed to hit me! Ouch! Oh no, I only had two hearts left! 
You think you're so tough with your diamond suit. Let's see how you are without it. Suddenly, an orb on Goblin's chest started to glow, and he took away my diamond suit. What did you do to me? Just taking what rightfully belongs to me. Now, I shall use this diamond upgrade to destroy the world. So long, Spider-Man. The Green Goblin knocked me off of the platform, and I helplessly fell to the ground below. On day two, I crash landed to the ground and was in extreme pain. Ow, that really hurt. Where the heck am I? I looked around and I was surrounded by trees. I was so weak and hungry. I needed to figure out how I was gonna survive in this world and find the Green Goblin before he destroys everything. I took the trees in front of me and collected most of the wood. Thanks to my climbing abilities as Spider-Man, I was able to climb to the top and get all of the remaining wood. I then went back on the floor and created a crafting table after I made myself a wooden pickaxe and a wooden sword. This will be useful. I eventually came across some stone inside of a ravine. Well, I guess I gotta make my way down here. I jumped inside to the bottom. I then used my wooden pickaxe to mine the material and upgraded all my wooden tools to stone. There. Much better. How am I gonna get back up, though? Oh, wait. I used my web shooters to swing through the ravine. Woohoo! Man, being Spider-Man is fun. Oh, I spoke too soon. I'm so hungry. I saw some chickens nearby and used my new stone sword to defeat them and take their meat. I came across a nice opening and decided that this would be the best place to build a base of operations. I used the leftover wood and stone that I had to make myself a nice home to stay in. I then crafted a furnace and cooked the chicken to eat. It's not pizza, but it'll do. I decided to go to bed and sleep for the night so that I could wake up stronger and better than before. On day three, I woke up to the sounds of explosions and earthquakes. What the heck is going on? I web shooted out of my base and the earthquakes were shaking the entire area up. Who could be doing this? I swung away from my base and found where they were coming from. I entered what looked like a destroyed village. Smash! 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 Iron golems were smashing through the village, fighting Hulk? They were smashing the ground near each other and it looked like the Hulk was winning. Oh gosh, I have to do something about this. Stop! I jumped in between them and started fighting them, but he wasn't reacting at all. It's Spider-Man, right? Wait, aren't you guys fighting? The Hulk told me that he wasn't fighting these golems at all. He was training them to protect the world against the Green Goblin and his forces. Goblin came by earlier and destroyed this village. Thanks for ruining our training. Jerk. Oh, yikes. Hulk quickly brought me away from the area, and I told him that the Green Goblin took away my diamond suit, and I needed to find a way to get stronger so that I can take him down. The Hulk told me that he was also dealing with this Green Goblin, and he might know a solution to my problem. We both headed over in the direction of his lab. On day four, we arrived at Hulk's lab, or what was left of it. It was completely overrun by a bunch of minions? Hulk told me that these were the Green Goblin's minions. Looks like we're gonna have to fight them off then. I was about to run in, but Hulk leaped ahead of me. Hulk smash! He took out a crowd with one smash. I... Um, yeah, I'm right behind you. I charged in two and started to fight off one with my stone sword. He was tough, but I was tougher. As we were fighting, I looked over and saw the Hulk take out more and more swarms of them. Show off. I was able to take the final goblin down with my stone sword. Yeah, that was a 50-50 effort, right? Why are you so weak? I told the Hulk that the goblin had taken my diamond suit and I was far weaker without it. I had to get it back to defeat him. I then asked him if he could make me a new diamond suit. Hulk laughed and told me that it wasn't going to be that easy without his lab. He offered to help me defeat the goblin, and I agreed to take him back to my base and make him a new lab. Once we arrived, I used some of the Hulk's resources to build a nice lab for him to work in. Look at that. I hope you like it. A little small to my liking, but it shall suffice. Great. We went inside of the lab, and the Hulk told me that I would need to work my way up with each material for me to eventually get my diamond suit back. So I need to get iron, gold, and then diamond? You will also also need to do one more thing in order to get stronger. And what's that? Easy. Do what heroes are supposed to do. Save people. First, I need to craft an iron suit for myself. The Hulk told me that while I'm looking for the materials, he would fix my current suit so that I wouldn't look all tattered. On day five, I went outside of Hulk's lab with my new suit, feeling as fresh as I could. <laughs> 
Thanks, man. It feels just right. No problem. Now go get me some iron. All right. Sheesh. I swung throughout the area, and suddenly my spider sense went off. Somebody's in trouble. I made it to a village, and it was completely destroyed. Who could have done this? You people don't have any diamonds? What a waste. I looked over and saw the green goblin, but he looked different. Stop right there, Green Goblin. That's Diamond Goblin to you, Webhead. I quickly realized that the goblin was covered in diamonds. Is that what you did to my suit? I charged at the goblin and punched him. <laughs> what a weak punch. The goblin then threw a bomb and it knocked me aside. Ah, ah. I lost half of my heart. You're not even worth my time, Spider-Man. Soon my diamond pumpkin bomb will be complete and I will turn New York into a destroyed city of diamonds. <laughs> the goblin flew away, and all I could do was helplessly watch him leave. I had left the village and continued my search looking for iron. I couldn't believe that that goblin was so strong. And now he goes by Diamond Goblin. What a dumb name. I need to put a stop to him and save the world. Help! Somebody help! Looks like it's time to finally be a hero. I swung over to the cry for help and spotted an old lady being mugged by a pillager. Somebody help me, please! Yeah, give me all your stuff, you stupid lady. Do what heroes are supposed to do. Save people. Hey, lay off! I charged in, and once he saw me, he went running. I used my web shooters to then shoot him down. Hopefully, that will teach you a lesson. Oh, thank you, young man. Here, how about you take this? The lady gave me some mutton to eat and even a few iron ingots. Thanks, you really helped me out. Now, uh, stay safe. Time to go tell the Hulk the great news. I think he'll be proud of me. Ah! 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 What? Am I out of web fluid? I can't shoot my webs anymore. I got up and tried shooting my web shooters, but no webs came out. Great. I need to find a way to get some new webs. This sucks. On day seven, I ventured across the world on foot and happened to come across a cave. Maybe if I find and kill spiders, I can take their webs. I went inside of the cave, and it was full of stone. I used my stone pickaxe to collect as much stone as I could. As I went deeper, I spotted some iron on the roof. Sweet. I made my way up and got some iron. Now, the Hulk can craft my iron armor. Suddenly, my spider senses went off, and I was able to hear spider noises deeper in the cave. If I took down those spiders, I could have a massive supply of web fluid. Time to get to work. I ventured deeper and spotted a group of them. Perfect. I pulled out my stone sword and was ready to attack. Oh my gosh, are you Spider-Man? I uh, quickly turned around and a baby spider was standing there in front of me. Uh, yeah? Wow, I'm your biggest fan. I want to be just like you when I grow up. Oh uh, man, <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, Listen, Spider-Man has a little bit of a problem. I told him about my web shortage and the baby spider gladly offered to help with that. Me and a group of spiders left the cave and made our way back to base. The spiders and I made it back to base and I quickly built them a nice little farm for them to stay in. Now we can give you an unlimited supply of web fluid, Spider-Man. Thanks, little guy. And as promised, here you go. I handed the baby spider a signed autograph by yours truly. Wow. Thanks, Spider-Man. I'll cherish this for the rest of my life. The other spiders gathered around the baby spider and were excited to see him happy. Aw, that's nice. I decided to use the stone and wood that I collected to rebuild more of the base and make it look bigger. It was going to take a little bit of work, but I thought it would be worth it. After that, I went inside of Hulk's lab and gave him all the iron that I've collected. Well done, Spider-Man. I think that's just about everything for me to make your iron suit, but I'm missing something. Hulk told me that one of the Diamond Goblin minions raided his previous lab and took a certain tool that would be important to making a suit. One of my iron golems tracked their location. Please hurry. You got it. I walked out of Hulk's lab and swung my way toward the minions. On days 9 to 10, I managed to track down Diamond Goblin's minions. It looked like I was brought over to a town. Suddenly, there was an explosion and a group of goblin goons were fleeing from the scene. We got the goods. Diamond Goblin is going to be pleased with us. Hey, stop right there. I think you have something that belongs to Hulk. It's Spider-Man! Get him! A minion came charging at me, and I dodged his attack and hit him with my stone sword. It barely did any damage to him, and he just laughed it off. What a weakling. Another minion came from behind and knocked me down to the ground. Ah! The minions all ganged up on me and beat me down. That guy, stop! Stop it! I was losing hearts fast. Back off! I shot my web shooters at the minions and was finally able to take one of them down. The other minions were surprised, and using my webs, I was able to scare the rest of them off. 
Phew, that was close. The minions dropped the tool that Hulk needed, but also a strange looking orb on the ground. I wonder what this is for. I picked up the tool and the orb and headed back towards base. Man, uh, I really need my suit upgraded fast. I made my way back to base and returned Hulk's tool back to him. Thank you, Spider-Man. Now I can finally make your iron suit. I also told Hulk about the orb that I picked up from one of the minions. Hmm, interesting. This may be the same device that Goblin used to take your diamond suit. I could use this to help hold your suit together. The Hulk went inside of his lab and got to work making the iron suit. Meanwhile, I went out to the world and found some more chickens. I was able to get their meat and noticed some cows grazing over the grass. I got the cows to come with me and we were to the lab. I then went out to collect some more wood and returned to build another farm for the cows to live in. Thank goodness you found some food. I was starting to think about eating some spiders. Ew. I killed one of the cows and cooked its meat to feed myself and the Hulk. The Hulk told me that the suit would be ready for the next day. So I went inside my house and went to sleep. On days 13 to 14, I woke up to the sound of Hulk calling out to me. I walked out of my house to go see what he wanted. Ah, uh, is it finished? It is. Your iron suit is ready for you. He then gave me the suit, and I equipped myself with a cool, silver-looking suit. I felt much stronger with this on, and even gained five more hearts. This thing is awesome. Thanks, Hulk. Not a problem, but remember, the suit is just a temporary fix. You still need to keep upgrading if you want to eventually have your diamond suit back. He was right. I needed to keep getting stronger if I wanted to take down the diamond goblin. Suddenly, my spider senses went off, and I can sense someone was in danger. I swung out of my base, and headed for the danger. I eventually found a village and webbed up to the tower. What's going on here? I looked down and saw a villager was being attacked by some minions. Nowhere to run now. Give us all your valuables. Oh no, they don't. I jumped and landed in front of the villager and the minions laughed at me. It's just Spider-Man. He's too weak to hurt us. I shot the minion with my web shooter and the web of iron immediately took him down. Looks like I got iron webs too. I took down the rest of the minions and told the villager that everything was safe now. The villager told me that the diamond goblin attacked this town and started taking their stuff. I told the villager to stay there and swung over to the town. I swung over to a mushroom looking town and found the diamond goblin taking away all of the villagers resources with his bombs. <laughs> Give me all your resources or die. You can't do this. And what are you gonna do about it? Stop me? No, that's my job. I landed in front of the muddy pig and faced the diamond goblin. You really think I'm just gonna let you do as you please, goblin? I shot the diamond goblin with all my iron webs, but he just <laughs> laughed it off. The goblin then threw his pumpkin bombs and greatly damaged me. Ow, that really hurts. The pig ran over to me and checked on me. Are you okay there, buddy? <laughs> You'll never be able to beat me, Spider-Man! Now that I got these resources, I'm one step closer to completing my diamond bomb! The goblin flew off. Man, I was so embarrassed, I still couldn't even fight him. Don't be so down. You'll be able to beat him. Matter of fact, I'll come with you and help. The pig introduced himself as Ham and said that he was a pig that loved mud. Yeah, uh, I can see that. All right, Ham, you can come with me. The two of us headed back to base. On day 17 to 18, Ham and I returned to base and I used the leftover wood and stone to build him a small home. I even threw a mud pit right next to it. I also used the leftover resources to build up my house more and made it even bigger. Ah, stop trying to eat me! Ham came running towards me and hid behind me from the Hulk. What are you doing? You brought more food for us, right? No! Ham will be staying with us for now, so that means no eating him. Hulk was a little upset about this, but he'll get over it. I told him that the Diamond Goblin has been taking precious materials from the world and I still can't even fight him. Hmm. He must be using those materials to build up that diamond pumpkin bomb of his. He needed to be stopped. And the only way for me to do that was to upgrade myself and get stronger. The next suit that you need to upgrade is to gold. Did someone say gold? The baby spider showed up and told me that there's a civilization full of golden spiders. And the golden spider queen may be able to help me get my upgrades. He told me where to find them. And I swung my way over there. I made it to the cave entrance of the golden spiders and continued my journey inside while I continued to search for them, I managed to find some gold within the cave. Using my stone pickaxe, I collected some iron and made iron tools. I then collected the gold ingots. The more gold I find, the better. What do you think you're doing? I couldn't see anything at first, but two golden spiders appeared in front of me. Hey, wait a minute. You're Spider-Man. 
man. These guys must be fans of mine as well. Of course they recognize me. I know, I know. Let me guess. You guys are huge fans, right? Ah! Suddenly, the golden spiders attacked me and started to overpower. Hey, what's going on? We're no fans of yours, stupid. The golden spiders managed to restrain me and hold me hostage. Ow, that hurts. Okay, fine. I told them that I was sorry for taking their gold. I only want to speak to your queen, okay? The two spiders then looked at each other and agreed to take me to their queen as a prisoner. On days 21 and 23, we reached the underground temple of the golden spiders. It was full of them. Wow. This place is pretty advanced for some spiders. What is that supposed to mean? Um, nothing. We made our way inside of the temple, and there was a golden spider that was way bigger than the rest. Help for the queen of spiders! The spider pushed me to the ground, and the golden spider queen approached me. You must be the spider man I've heard so much about. What do you require of me? I told the queen that I needed her help with upgrading my suit into a golden form. Ah, I have a proposition for you. I will give you our sacred golden silk, but in return, you will have to do something for me. The queen told me that someone has taken all of their electrical power, so they've been reduced to using torches like savages. Oh, brother. We might be spiders, but we're not animals. We need our power, please. Bring this thief to us, and I will gladly give you some of our golden silk. Uh, you've got yourself a deal, your majesty. The queen told me the thief's whereabouts, and I left the temple to go capture him. Hmm. The golden spider queen said that the thief would be somewhere around here. And from the looks of things, I am at the right place. Suddenly, my spider sense went off and I jumped out of the way, dodging a lightning bolt. I turned around and saw a guy who had electricity powers. Is that? Yes, it is I, Electro. Of course those stupid spiders would send you after me, Spider-Man. Electro told me that he's been going around stealing power from the world and took all the power out of the golden spider temple. That place is like an energy buffet. Ain't no way I'm giving that back to them. We'll see about that. Electro summoned a storm of lightning around the area, and I dodged as many lightning bolts as I could. I got hit by one of the lightning bolts. I needed to stop Electro, and fast. I used my iron webs to stun and distract him. Then, using my spider strength, I knocked Electro into a pool of water, shorting him out. Oh no! I'm out of power! You're coming with me, spark plug. There, I'm almost finished. Soon, New York City will be nothing but ashes. <laughs> On days 27 to 29, I returned to the Golden Spider Temple with Electro as my prisoner. Here's your thief, your majesty. I push Electro in front of the Golden Spider Queen. Thank you, Spider-Man. As promised, the Golden Spider Silk is all yours. The Queen then dropped the Golden Silk, and I thanked her for help. Now that I've got the Silk, what do you plan on doing with Electro? Oh, don't you worry, Spider-Man. I have my uses for him. Suddenly, a golden spider came up and hit Electro. He then took him into another room. The rooms then all lit up again. I guess they're using him for their main power source now. I thank the golden spiders for their help and left the temple. Ah, man. Just another day of being Spider-Man. Time to go swing back home and you've got to be kidding me. It looks like I'm walking. After walking for a long period of time, I finally made it back to base. Ah, uh, I need to walk more often, jeez. As I went towards my home, I noticed that there was a farm. Who did this? Ham walked up to me and told me that he did. Yeah, I planted some wheat so that you could eat something other than meat. I heard that, you little ham hawk. Hulk walked up also, and it seems like the two still didn't get along that well. Hulk, I have the items needed for you to make what I need. And Ham, thanks for helping out, but both of you need to get a grip. The Hulk took the golden silk from me and went back into his lab and got to work on the golden suit. The next day, the Hulk came out of his lab and gave me the golden spider suit. Sweet! Now I've got 10 more hearts and feel a lot stronger. The Hulk told me that he spotted some of the goblins minions at a factory working on something. You should probably go over there and see what they're up to. He was right. Maybe if I destroyed that factory, I could slow down the diamond goblin. I swung out of my base and made my way towards the factory. On days 33 to 35, I managed to find the factory that the Hulk was talking about. As I got closer, my spider sense started to go off, and I quickly hid behind some bushes. Some minions were walking by carrying diamonds. 
Phew, that was close. The minions went inside of the factory, and I waited till the coast was clear before I snuck my way inside. When I did, the factory was completely full of diamonds. The goblin has been busy. He must have ravaged most of the world to get this many diamonds. I saw the minions from earlier and spotted them heading deeper inside. I quietly followed after them, and they eventually led me to a room with more minions. They were dropping diamonds into a diamond-looking pumpkin bomb. This must be what Diamond Goblin planned on using to destroy New York City. This bomb is way too big, though. It wouldn't only destroy New York, but it was big enough to destroy the entire world. I had to put a stop to this. Hey, it's Spider-Man! The minions noticed me, and I was completely surrounded by them. This won't be an easy fight. Suddenly, a minion snuck up behind me and knocked me on the back of my head. Oh, no. I'm gonna pass out. Ow, my head. My vision started to come back to me and I realized that I was still inside of the factory. I looked over and also saw that I'd been imprisoned and the diamond goblin was outside of my cage. Did you have a nice nap, Spider-Man? He asked if I liked his diamond pumpkin bomb. You are insane. Why are you doing this? Because I know how important New York is to you. Once it's destroyed, you will lose all hope. The goblin told me that after he destroys New York, it'll be all the more satisfying to kill me. You'll never get away with this. Oh, but I already have. Now sit there and rot while I finish my bomb. <laughs> That monster. I need to get out of here. But how am I supposed to do that? There has to be a way out. Suddenly, a rumbling came from behind my cage and Ham popped out of a hole. Ham, what are you doing here? There's no time. Let's get out of here. I followed Ham down the hole and eventually it led into an underground cave. As we were making our way out, I spotted a few diamonds and used my iron pickaxe to mine them. It wasn't enough to make my diamond suit, but it was more than enough to craft a pair of diamond tools. Once we made it out of the cave, Ham and I quickly went back to base. On days 39 to 41, Ham and I returned to base, and I thanked him for rescuing me. No problem. It's what heroes do, right? You got that right, pal. The Hulk then came out of his lab and was glad to see that I was safe. I told the Hulk about the bomb that Diamond Goblin was making and how critical it was for me to get my diamond suit back. I've been doing a lot of research, and I believe not only do you need your diamond suit back, you also need a better version of your diamond suit. The Hulk told me that in order for him to make me a new suit, he's gonna need a better lab than the one he has. What's wrong with the lab that I made you? It doesn't have all the supplies I need. It's too small. You know that I'm the Hulk, right? Whatever. Hulk told me that he spotted a location that will have the supplies I need to build his new lab. Also, grab any futuristic gadgets that may be useful to build your suit, and be careful when you go inside. There may be someone there waiting for you. I made my way over to the location and spotted the place that the Hulk was talking about. He could have told me that I was going to Stark tower, the home of Iron Man, I swung my way up to the tower and entered the inside of the building. I looked around the place and it definitely looked futuristic. I don't think Iron Man would mind me taking some of his stuff, right? I pulled out my diamond pickaxe and started mining down the inside of the tower. I collected any material that I thought would look cool. After collecting the materials, I spotted what looked like a few futuristic tools. Ooh, the Hulk's gonna love these. When I grabbed the tools, my spider sense went off and I quickly dodged a laser blast. Uh, what are you doing in my tower? Hey, uh, Iron Man, right? Listen, I am a huge fan. I just need to borrow this stuff to help save the world, you know, superhero things. Save the world, please. I know a thief when I see one. Iron Man continued blasting his lasers at me and I dodged them. I don't want to fight, please. Iron Man still didn't buy it, so I had no choice but to hit him with my webs. He was stunned temporarily and I quickly swung out of his base. I promise I'll bring your stuff back when I'm done. On days 45 to 47, I returned to my base and the Hulk was standing there waiting for me. Did you get the supplies you need? out of Stark Tower? Yeah, I did. And thanks for the heads up, by the way. The Hulk brushed off my comment, and I used the resource that I collected to build the Hulk a bigger and better lab. It took some time, but I was able to get through all of it. Sweet. I think I kind of outdid myself. I also had a lot of resources left over, so I decided to upgrade my house and make that look futuristic too. The Hulk and I toured around his new lab, and he told me that it was exactly what he needed to help me make my diamond armor. There's just one thing we desperately need in order for me to make your diamond. Diamond suit, the diamond spider. The 
Hulk told me that the diamond spider was just like the golden spiders, except the downside was that there was only one. The diamond spider is such a rare being that it may not even exist. People say it's a myth. Well, I'll just have to find that out for myself. The Hulk told me that I should journey around and see if anyone knows of its whereabouts. I agreed with him and swung out of the base in search of the diamond spider. As I swung across the area, I noticed that there was a cloud of smoke in the air. I think I should go investigate. Once I arrived at the source, I was shocked to see what I'd found. I came across a giant crater in the ground and a villager standing around it. I asked the villager what happened here and he told me that the crater used to be their village. Wait, what? Did a meteor hit it? No, the village was attacked by some guy calling himself the Diamond Goblin. He said that he wanted to test out some bomb and he did this to us. Goblin, that maniac. He must be getting stronger and closer to his goal. Suddenly, I heard the sound of screams and the villager told me that there were still people inside. I had to go help him. I powered my way through the fire and saw the villagers surrounded by the flames. Uh, don't worry guys, everything's gonna be okay. I used my webs to put out the fire and let the villagers out of the crater. All right, come on, come on, that's it. Once they were all out, all of the villagers surrounded me and started cheering for me. Thank you for saving us. Here, take this as a show of our gratitude. The villager gave me some emeralds and some diamonds. Thanks to that, I was closer to making my diamond spider armor. Sweet. I thanked the villager for his help and swung out away from the crater. On days 51 to 53, I continued my search for the diamond spider. I came across a mountainous biome and heard a familiar voice. Back off, you jerks. Leave me alone. It was him, and he was being attacked by a group of wolves. I need to go save him. I swung over to them and blocked them from getting to him. All right, guys. Time to go home. They didn't listen, though. So I used my webs on them and scared them away. That's right. You better run. All right, tough guy. I asked Ham what he was doing out here, and he told me that he was trying to get stronger. Yeah, but you've got to be more careful next time. You could have gotten yourself hurt. Uh, I was just trying to be a hero like you. I told him that I understood, and he and I left the area. You know, I think I had an idea. After all of that, Ham and I spotted a cave and decided to go inside of it for materials. It had everything I needed, so I used my pickaxe to collect the stone and iron that was inside. I even found a few diamonds and mined them as well so that I could be better prepared for my diamond spider suit. Ham and I left the cave, and I spotted some red flowers and collected them to use its red dye. Spider-Man? What are you doing with all this stuff? I decided that you deserved a gift, so close your eyes. Ham did what I asked, and I gave him a spider mask and a pair of web shooters. Now you can go follow your dreams, buddy. But after training, of course, why don't we test out your web shooter? Ham and I came across some trees. Let's get started. It took days and days of trial and error, but after a while, he was able to swing around at will. He then did a sick superhero landing. Spider-Man, quick, there's trouble back at the base. The baby spider came running in and told us that the base is under attack by the diamond goblin. Oh no. The three of us quickly headed back. On days 57 to 59, we made it back to base to find it completely in ruins. Oh man, I was too late. Hulk? Where's Hulk? I quickly ran over to Hulk's destroyed lab and couldn't find him anywhere. Without Hulk, I won't be able to make my diamond suit. I needed to go make sure he was safe. But first, I should probably rebuild the base to keep our defenses high. I went out and got as much resources that I could find. I then used them to rebuild my house, Hulk's lab, and everyone's home. Thanks to my web swinging and climbing abilities, it didn't take too long. Now that I've taken care of that, it was time for me to find him. The baby spider then came up to me and told me that the other spiders saw him getting taken away by the goblin's minions. Great. I had to go save him, but I knew that I couldn't do it alone. Baby, you don't have to. All right, Ham. But first, you'll need a full suit. I used some of the string that I collected from the spiders earlier and made Ham a new suit. From this day forward, you are no longer Ham. You are Spider Pig. Spider Pig was happy about his new suit, and the two of us swung over to find Hulk. We made our way into a forest and spotted a baby goblin walking towards somewhere. Ah, oh, man. This stupid diamond goblin guy wants all these stupid diamonds. Spider Pig and I quickly surprised the golem, and he started to freak out and run. I decided that this guy needed some interrogation. Ah, uh, please. Uh, uh, don't hurt me, man. Listen here. We know you work for the diamond goblin. Tell us where the Hulk is. We could tell that the baby goblin was very scared. It's not like I want to work for him. I'm being forced to do so. Spider Pig yelled at him. <laughs> all right, all right, listen. The baby goblin introduced himself as Gobby, and he told us that he knew where the Hulk 
was. He's being held in the desert not far from here. I can help out if you let me go. Great. I took Gobby down from the web. I decided to let him come along. He quickly hopped on Spider Pig so that he could keep up with us. Oh, man. This is so much better than walking. Don't push it. On day 63 to 65, the three of us ventured through and finally spotted the Hulk. We stopped a good distance away because he was surrounded by a swarm of goblin minions. I told Gobby to find somewhere to hide while Spider Pig and I went to go and rescue the Hulk. He was trapped in a cage and Spider Pig and I quickly charged in to fight the goblins. The goblins kept trying to attack me, but I was quickly able to dodge them and use my webs to take them down. Another one then charged in and sliced me with the diamond sword, taking away five of my hearts. I shot him with my web and easily took him down. More of them started to show up though, and I was starting to get overwhelmed. Spider Pig snuck away from the violence. All right, remember your training. He shot his web and did exactly what he did a day ago, making it to the Hulk's cage. He then freed the Hulk. Thank you, Pig. You are a hero. Now, it's time to smash. The Hulk came charging and started smashing down the goblin minions. The minions grew scared and quickly were defeated. Thanks for the assistance, Hulk. And good job back there, Spider Pig. You've got the makings to be a real hero. Spider Pig was excited to hear that, and we all made our way back to base. We returned to base. Thank you for saving me back there, Spider-Man. Those goblins were lucky that Cage held me back from smashing them. I told the Hulk that I couldn't find any trace of the diamond spider. Maybe he was actually a myth. Actually, the diamond spider is real. Goblin! Hulk smash! Wait! I stopped the Hulk from hurting Gobby and told him that Gobby was a friend. The Hulk calmed down and apologized for his outburst. Gobby told us that the diamond goblin had him track the spider and he finally found its location. I was on my way to go tell him before I met you guys. Great job, Gobby! As a reward for helping us, you get to play in my mud pile. Mud pile? Score! I can tell that the two were starting to become really good friends. They ran over to the mud pile to go and play, while I swung over to the diamond spider's location. On day 69 to 71, I made it to the location where Gobby told me. It was a dark cave most people wouldn't spot. I went inside, and it was completely covered in diamonds. There was more than enough for me to make hundreds of diamond suits. Hello there, Spider-Man. I quickly turned around, and the diamond spider was right behind me. I was surprised that my spider sense didn't go off. The diamond spider expected me to come here, and I told him that I needed his help with making my diamond suit. Ah, oh, of course. You want me to help you. Then you must prove yourself worthy of my aid. Suddenly, the spider cast in an illusion, and there was another Spider-Man right in front of me. He looked just like me, but he was wearing the diamond armor I wanted. The diamond spider wanted me to defeat my double in order to pass his test. The double jumped at me, and we began our fight. The double shot spider webs at me, and I ran across the wall to dodge. I tried to catch him from behind, but the double dodged and punched me across the cave. Ah! You are strong enough without this diamond suit, Spider-Man. You just have to believe it. He was right. The double tried to attack me again, but I used my webs to stun him. I then charged in to finish him off. But the moment I got to the double, he vanished. The diamond spider congratulated me and told me that I passed his test. But just know, you are strong enough without it. He agreed to help me, and we both headed back to base. When we arrived, the mud pile that was there before was surprisingly bigger. Spider Pig, Gobby, what's going on? Me and Gobby wanted to make the mud pile bigger so that we can play even more. Yeah, and I'm gonna go get some more mud too. Oh, I'll help. The two of them ran off laughing and in search of more mud. Those two are really getting close now. I went over to the spider farm and collected a huge amount of spider webs from the spider. I then used them to build a giant spider web on the side of the base using my web swinging and web shooters. This would soon become the diamond spider's new home. And just like that, everything looked to be done. The diamond spider thanked me for building his home and gave me some spider webs as a reward. I thanked him and quickly made my way over to the lab. I ran inside and approached Hulk. He told me that this was the last thing he needed to craft the diamond suit. He quickly went to work and I left his lab to give him some time. The next day, I quickly met back up with him at his lab, and he finally finished the suit. I equipped it, and I immediately felt a lot stronger than before. I even gained 10 more hearts. Diamond Spider-Man is back in action. But I noticed that Gobby and Spider-Pig haven't come back to base. Huh.
strange. I decided to go out and look for them. On days 75 to 77, I was swinging throughout the world looking for Spider Pig and Gobby. Where could those two be? Suddenly, I heard a scream and swung over to see Diamond Goblin was attacking the two of them. So this is what you've been up to, Gobby? Playing in the mud with this filth? You will be punished for this! Leave my friend alone! He went in and started a fight. Oh no, I need to help now. I jumped in the fight as well, helping Spider Pig. Diamond Goblin noticed me and hit me with one of his diamond explosives. Ah, I was so weak. Time to finally get rid of you. He shot another one at me. Spider Pig jumped in the way though and took the hit, killing him. No! no! I punched Goblin away. You are gonna pay for this. I shot my new diamond webs at Diamond Goblin, and he quickly dodged them. Diamond Goblin charged in and threw his pumpkin bombs at me. I dodged the bomb, but wasn't able to dodge the blast, and I was in a lot of pain. Ugh. <laughs> Even with your diamond suit back, you're still no match for me! While the goblin was distracted, Gobby shot an arrow at Goblin's glider, damaging it. What have you done, you fool? You will pay for what you've done to my friend! Gobby shot another arrow, and it malfunctioned Goblin's glider. The diamond goblin threw a pumpkin at Gobby, instantly hitting him to the floor. Gobby's arrow caused the diamond goblin to uncontrollably fly away. Gobby, Gobby, get up, please. I can't lose you too. Please, uh, Spider-Man, stop the Diamond Goblin. Avenge us. I know you will make both of us proud. Wait, wait, no. I can't believe this. I slowly walked back toward base. I was so sad and frustrated. Gobby and Spider-Pig were gone, and I wasn't even strong enough to save him. I just couldn't understand it. I had my diamond suit back, but I still couldn't beat Diamond Goblin. Why? What was I missing? Ah! The Hulk suddenly came running in. Spider-Man! I came to look for you! Spider-Pig and Gobby, where are they? I told the Hulk that Spider-Pig and Gobby were gone. He was very sad about this. This can't be. I'm sorry to hear that. Those two shall be missed greatly. I have some other news to share with you. The Hulk told me that the last thing I needed in order to complete my diamond suit was a new diamond sense. He told me that the diamond spider would know more about it, and the two of us made our way back to base. This was the first step to avenge my friends. On days 81 to 85, we returned to base, and I told everyone about Gobby and Spider Pig's passing. Everyone was saddened to hear this. I decided to build graves over the mud pile for them. We all gathered around and mourned for the loss of our friends. Even though I didn't like you at first, you still showed me what a true hero was meant to be, Spider Pig. You will be missed. Gobby and Spider Pig were some of the bravest people that I've ever met, and I'll never forget them. I vowed at their graves that I would become stronger and take down the Diamond Goblin and honor their memory, no matter what it took. After the funeral, I went over to the diamond spider's place and asked him about unlocking a new spider sense. The diamond spider sense will enhance your own spider abilities tenfold. If you acquire this, you'll be unstoppable. I told the diamond spider that I was ready to acquire the ability and he told me that he needed to bite me first. I allowed him to do it and once the diamond spider bit me, I immediately fell to the ground and passed out. I opened my eyes and found myself in a different world. It seems like I'm dreaming? I walked inside of this dream realm and suddenly three different Spider-Men appeared in front of me. It was the regular, iron, and golden versions. Are you guys gonna fight me too? What? No way, dude. We're just here to remind you of your journey and who you are. You've come a long way from where you started and now you're here. We've seen that you're filled with rage. You've been through a lot, but we all know that you'll make it through no matter what. I told him that I was filled with rage. How couldn't I be? Goblin killed both of my friends. If anyone can understand what you're going through, it's us. Just please, don't let this rage make you do something you'll regret. They all disappeared. Suddenly, there was a large flash of light, and I woke up back inside of my base. Hulk and the Diamond Spider were there waiting for me. Have you acquired the Diamond Spider sense? I saw the Diamond Spider try to attack me, and I quickly dodged before he even started. He has. You You've now fully completed your diamond spider suit. The diamond spider was right. I felt stronger than I ever had before. My spider sense was on a whole different level. Now that I've acquired this ability, I was ready to find the diamond goblin and stop his evil 
plan. On days 91 and 94, I concentrated on using my diamond sense, and suddenly, an image popped in my head. It was an abandoned warehouse, and the diamond goblin was there with a now completed diamond pumpkin bomb. The image disappeared, and with this information, I swung out of my base and headed for the warehouse. I finally made it there, and before I entered the building, my diamond spider sense went off again. A group of goblin minions came out of the entrance, and I had no choice but to fight my way inside. The goblins tried hitting me, but I was too fast for them and dodged them easily. This new sense was no joke. The other goblins tried to attack me, but I used my diamond webs to easily take them all down. I made my way inside of the warehouse, but the diamond goblin was nowhere in sight. Where could he be? A loud explosion went off, causing the entire warehouse to shake. I sensed something new. I quickly ran over to the explosion and saw the diamond goblin in the distance. I shot my diamond web and swung after the diamond goblin. I finally made it to the place the goblin has been threatening all along. New York City, the home of Spider-Man. But it was in complete turmoil. Most of the city was destroyed and it was completely overrun with goblins minions. I spotted diamond goblin flying towards the center of the town and my diamond spider sense went off and I was suddenly surrounded by an army of goblin minions. The minions charged at me, and I swung over them and landed behind them before they could even react. I shot my webs at them and mowed them down one by one. They tried to get to me, but I ran across the wall to dodge them. I then used my strength and took the rest of them down. I could hear the sounds of laughter as a diamond goblin made it to the center of New York City. I used my webs to swing my way over there and end this madness once and for all. On day 100, I landed in front of the middle of the city and the diamond goblin was there, standing in front of his diamond pumpkin bomb. Ah, Spider-Man, you came just in time to watch me blow New York City up sky high. You think that I'm just gonna let you do that? This ends now, goblin. Diamond goblin threw one of his pumpkin bombs, but thanks to my spider sense, I quickly dodged it. I shot him with my webs, causing a good amount of damage to him. Uh, it looks like you've gotten stronger. Yeah, you got that right. The diamond goblin charged at me, but I jumped out of his way. He charged at me again and tried to send me flying, but it did little damage. He was shocked to see this. I used my spider strength to send him flying where he landed next to the bomb. I could tell that the goblin was scared of me, and he quickly ran over and activated it. Say goodbye to New York City, Spider-Man! No! I quickly ran my way over and fought the goblin again! I am a lot stronger than I used to be! I was about to defeat the goblin because of all my built-up rage! When suddenly... Just please, don't let this rage make you do something you'll regret. This is for a gobby and Spider-Pig. I made my way over to the bomb and turned it off. I'm better than that. The city of New York was once again saved, and Diamond Goblin was stopped for good.